Buju, uh, Max Oliver John Kakigamek, Nindijne Kaz, Yamatung um, First Nation, Nundunji. So, what I just said is Hi, my name is Max Oliver John Kakigamek. I'm from Yamatung First Nation. And the topic I would like to introduce to you today is us and the Res Dogs. I come from two Northern Ontario communities Thunder Bay, Ontario, uh, which I was born and currently live in. And I also live in Yamatung First Nation, where I've spent several years. I like spending my time in Fort Hope in the wild, by that I mean like in the bush. Hunting, fishing, and just general outdoor activities. I love my dogs. I appreciate all the time I've spent with them. But sadly, dogs don't always love me. When I was younger, I was once attacked by some wild dogs while walking to school. I was lucky. Wild dogs, also known as res dogs, tend to have these like weird tendencies because they're not being taken care of, so they take des desperate measures. Many who get attacked often suffer horrible injuries, or even worse, sometimes death. Some estimates have been made that the population of res dogs on reservations are up as high as one million. So the story I want to tell you will end with a call to action. But first, before I do that, the call to action is basically just like some suggestions and all that for communities. But first, I want to tell you about how these calls to action came to be. Back when I was still in high school, back last May actually, <laughs> <laughs> my education counselor actually recommended me to apply for a leadership camp, and my education counselor's name was Lyndon Waboos. Thank you, Lyndon. I think you're watching right now. But yeah, he recommended me to apply for this leadership conference. It's called LEAD. LEAD stands for Leadership, Entrepreneurship, and Design Thinking. So I went to LEAD, and at the end of the first day, I already met some pretty amazing people, and I got put into a group of four. I was told the whole idea about the camp was to come up with an idea and develop it further. So then my team and I, we actually identified two ideas, a music infused coffee shop and a control of res dog populations. After a lot of discussion, we decided to go with the control on the res dog populations because it affected each of us personally. Besides, I'm a tea drinker. <laughs> From that point, we developed the idea further. We were also preparing for a presentation at Google at the end of the conference. We were very nervous. I felt very nervous. But at the end of that third day, I was nominated to present in front of the Google people. So then I accepted because, uh, well, it was my first public speech, so I didn't know what to expect, but I was open to it. It wasn't the smoothest presentation, and it was pretty hard, not gonna lie. This was my mindset at the time. If I take this opportunity, where will it lead me? It basically led me to being here today at TEDx. The best advice I can give is to think where your speaking opportunities will lead you. The key word is right there, opportunity. And now, back to the dogs. The best part about LEAD is that we learn to look at a problem creatively and find a solution humanely. Wild dogs often start as cute puppy pets but then get abandoned later in their life. Once in the wild, they start reproducing. So while the problem starts with people abandoning their dogs, there's another one and that's reproducing in the wild uncontrolled. The idea my team and I developed was NERD. It stood for neuter every res dog, but that only solved half the problem. So I'd like to introduce you guys to Nerd 2.0. <laughs> Neutralize every res dog. When we were doing our research, we actually found that it was very effective. So that got us wondering, why wasn't it used, or why isn't it used more often? Often the biggest barrier is cost. So our solution would be a community-driven project. Here are the guidelines that we would give to these communities. 
organize a volunteer team to catch these dogs. We believe that people would volunteer to this program because it would make the community a safer place for everybody, including the dogs. Recruit veterinarians that can perform spaying and neutering. These guys would basically just clean the dogs, make sure they're safe. And finally, arrange adoption services for these dogs. Now, here's where it gets very interesting. Why should veterinarians donate their time to this? I've discovered some very interesting information that should attract government funding. In the last year, last few years, a rodent type of tapeworm that originated in wolves has crossed over into dogs. It is also fatal to humans. I'm not even going to attempt to say that. <laughs> That's the word. <laughs> well, the cost of not addressing this problem went up, way up. I don't really know where this will go yet, but I'm encouraged that there has never been a better path to uh, population control on these reservations for dogs. Thank you so much.